Hey guys, I'm making some steady progress reassembling the Filco 60. Got the transformer remounted and wired in. I've got that rebuilt coil wired in. Got the tuning capacitor remounted. I've got some of the Bakelite block capacitors back in. And uh, the rebuilt electrolytic capacitors are mounted. Still need to wire them in though. What's been essential for doing all this is a nice clean schematic of the correct revision. I've been going through and checking every single component and wiring connection and then highlighting the ones that are good and yellow. So you can see what I've got done here so far and what's still left to do. This section isn't so bad though because a lot of this uh, was left untouched like these uh, IF coils and so on. That's the stuff down in here. Another nice thing is that uh, so far all these resistors have checked with intolerance, all these nice old style resistors, so I'm able to reuse those. Some of the old wiring has to go though, like for example this was a wire to that tone control, and this is a rubber coated wire, and it, the insulation is just falling apart, so that's got to go. And some of these old connections like this wire goes around and around down to this bundle which are the three wires that go out to the speaker which is actually one of the wires off of the filter capacitor because remember the field coil on the speaker is used as a filter choke so either side of it goes to either of these two filter capacitors well long ago these had been bypassed with new capacitors and this was the ugly job they used to <laughs> to uh, solder them in so all this has got to go. Likewise this ugly old uh, splice here. Once I get the, all that part squared away then I'm going to feed back in this guy which is yet another rebuilt uh, capacitor and that's going to sit down in here and once it does it really blocks access to uh, these filter caps and so on, so I'm saving this till a bit later. But uh, hopefully uh, a couple more days and I can uh, do a test fire on this. Here's a progress update. I have got the electrolytics partially wired in. The first one goes right to the rectifier tube. That's this guy. And the negatives go over to the bias resistor. Okay, here, got that wired in. And now these two positive terminals go to either side of the field coil on the speaker. And there's a third speaker wire here that goes to the output tube. So I need to run a wire from here, a wire from here, and one over here on the output tube. And they come out this hole and they go to the speaker. Um, let's see, I finished wiring in the 6.3 volts for the filaments, including running two new wires out this hole in the front that goes to the uh, dial light bulb. That's what they show here on the schematic. The original wires were really rotted away, so I just put in brand new ones. I've remounted the tone control, and I've got that wired in. I have temporarily unmounted the band switch because I noticed that these silver terminals were very corroded. So first I used a Q-tip and some alcohol just to clean out all in and around on both sides. And then I used a little bit of semichrome on a toothpick to polish up the individual silver pads. And then I flushed that clean with uh, the alcohol again. And finally, I'm going to give it a spritz of deoxit and work it back and forth good. And then I noticed it's a little bit stiff, so I'm going to put a little bit of oil in here and back in here to help lubricate that shaft. Now for the final control down here, it's a volume control and power switch. If you recall, I was going on about how the one that was in here was not the original and it wasn't the right value. It was measuring close to one meg. It's supposed to be 350k. Well, I dug through my controls and I found this one. It's about a 450k. So it's not 350 but a heck of a lot closer than one meg. 
and it does have a power switch on it and it has a nice smooth action. So I'm going to go with this for the time being and see how it sounds. If it works out really well, I'll have to cut the shaft down to be the same length as this and then grind it down a bit to give it a beveled edge so the knobs will fit on properly like they do on this. Oh, so what's left? I got two more of these rebuilt Bakelite block caps to put in and then this guy and uh, then I'll double check everything and uh, should be good to go. The grid cap leads on this set are all in pretty crummy condition so I want to replace them. I've already run a new lead for this guy. This one goes through a lead in the tube socket through one of the rivet holes there so I just need to run any wire uh, from this cap down through there. That should be fairly straightforward. Now for this guy. This one goes right into this can and that can is pretty well seated into the chassis so I can't pull it out. So what I'm going to try to do is cut this off and pull out the coil from the bottom. I've already loosened it up. There was a screw down here holding it so now this whole coil is loose. I'll need to remove a couple of these trimmer caps maybe on solder one or two wires and then carefully slide it out so I can solder on a new wire. I was able to work the coil free and look what I found. <laughs> I think that is the result of the old wax or whatever type of resin or shellac they sealed this with going bad over time. Uh, it's kind of strange. It's almost like, uh, like a waxy, bubbly kind of surface. It just sort of collapses as soon as you touch it. I don't think it's causing any problems or anything it's just whatever material they used back then got all kind of funky over time but the important thing is here is that wire that goes to the uh, cap lead this black wire going down here so I'm going to unsolder it at this end pull it free and then feed a new wire through there I removed the old grid cap wire and have soldered a new one in and uh, I also discovered that all this bubbling goo is just the old wax. So pulled out a heat gun, set on low, and just quickly went over it, and uh, it remelted it all quite nicely. And uh, no more bubbles. I cut the new grid cap leads to length, stripped the end, soldered on grid cap and this is how they go. I had to use thinner diameter wire on this one because the hole that it goes through there is just too small for this wire to fit through so I reused some of the old original wiring for this guy. And then the tube shields slide over like so. These are pretty filthy though so I'm gonna get a little navel jelly going on these. The tops of each one is pretty rusty. The last section I have to rewire is this back corner where the Type 78 IF tube resides. It was kind of a mess back here. Some newer resistors have been installed, which weren't even the right values according to the schematic. And most of the older resistors had drifted off value. For example, this should be a 32K, but I'm measuring 63K, so I'm going to be replacing that. The original resistors looked like this which are called dog bone resistors because well they're shaped like a dog bone and they use the color coding scheme called bed for body and dot the colors are the same as newer resistors for example brown is one red is two orange is three and so on but they, they don't have stripes on them like these they use bed or body and dot so for example on this the body is green which is five the end is brown, which is one, and the dot is orange, which is three. So we've got five, one, and then three zeros, or 51K. 
Here's the new resistors I like to use, which are metal film. They're stable, reliable, but they look nothing like these old resistors. So I thought this would be a great chance to try out something I've never done before, which is to replicate these dog bone resistors. Briefly, the idea is you take one of these that's in good condition, you make a mold out of it, you put in a new resistor, which are physically smaller than the originals, you fill in the void with some plumber's uh, epoxy putty, wait till it hardens, pop it out of the mold, and then paint it to look like this. Why would I want to go to those crazy lengths? Well, I don't have to, obviously. Uh, but since I went to so much trouble to rebuild the capacitors and restuff the Bakelite blocks and so on, I figured I might as well go to the last stop and replicate some of these old resistors. A few are also this style, which is just kind of a variation, where the ends are a bit fatter and they're metallic. Uh, but you, you could create these with the same technique as well. So I just went on a little shopping trip and picked up all the supplies I need, and uh, I think it's time to give it a try. Here are four resistors I've removed that I want to replicate. And the one that had been replaced by two modern resistors in series, I found a picture of online. And this is what it's supposed to look like. Somebody posted a high-res photo of the bottom of an entire Philco 60 unrestored, which I've used as a really handy reference. So there's the 32K I want to replace, and there's the 39K I want to replace. In mine, it had a 10K and a 5K, so I'm not sure exactly what somebody was doing with that. Maybe it was the closest stuff they had on hand, but 15K is certainly not 39K. I'm going to go with this value. As for where I learned this technique for replicating them, that was at the Radio Museum website. And there's the URL. There's some other websites online. Basically, just Google replicating old dog bone resistors and you'll find uh, these articles. And uh, I was able to find all this stuff, even the, uh, even the plumber putty I've got is exactly the same stuff that they used. Got this at Home Depot. Uh, I got a ring rainbow assortment of acrylic paints at Joanne Fabrics and they were on sales less than a, a buck. I think it was like 55 cents per color, which is just great. Except for the white. I couldn't get the same Americana brand. I got this gloss, um, different brand, whereas these are all fairly flat. Oh, we'll see how that works out. In this article they talk about talcum powder. I didn't have any of that on hand, and they uh, mentioned baby powder in the material list. Well, I went to my local uh, grocery store and a baby powder was like five bucks, which is a little more than I want to spend just to, <laughs> for this little experiment. I noticed that the primary ingredient in baby powder was cornstarch. So I went to the cornstarch area and got a box for about a buck, so uh, I think that'll work out just fine. Uh, I got some wax paper down. They suggest using that so the plumber's molding epoxy doesn't stick to it. So I'll roll up a ball of this, cover the resistor in talcum powder, mush it into the putty, wait for that to set up and then put more cornstarch over it and then mush some more epoxy on that to make a two-part mold as they show in the picture here. So I'll end up with that and then you put the new resistor inside of that, you mush on some more putty and wait for it to harden up. You end up with something like that, pop it out of the mold and paint it and you get that. The very first thing I need to do is clean these up and straighten out the leads because they got wax and crud on them and the leads are all bent up. I cleaned off the resistors with some mineral spirits and straightened out the leads. I then cut off a chunk of the epoxy putty and mixed it up good. Made a nice little blob of it. Now I'm going to cover one of the resistors in the cornstarch and then mush it in the mold. So far so good. I've finished making molds 
for the smaller guys. And uh, this one should be just about done. There we go. Alright, that looks good too. So, the next thing to do now is to actually get uh, the metal film resistors and try to cast one of these. Here are the metal film resistors I've selected to use next to their original counterparts. Some of these original values were oddball values compared to what's available now, so I had to use the closest values I could find. For example, this was originally a 490K. The closest standard value is a 510K. Now keep in mind that these original resistors had a tolerance of plus minus 20% if that, so this is well within that tolerance. 51K is not a problem, so I have an exact match for that. This was a 32K, I've selected a 33K. And this, I believe, was a 99K, as near as I can make out. The body and the end seem to be the same color, white, which is 9, so it's 9-9, nine, nine, and then orange for three zeros. On the schematic, it's just a 100K resistor, so that's what I'm going to go with. As far as the wattage goes, uh, it's a little hard to tell. Um, just kind of going by where they're used in the circuits and a little bit of research I did online. These are half watt, maybe even quarter watt. And I'm pretty sure this is a one watt resistor. Now believe it or not, these little itty bitty guys, these are actually one watt resistors. And this is only a half watt. Uh, these are specially designed uh, high density, high temperature resistors. And uh, I should have no problem fitting them inside the mold because they're smaller than the originals. Now that one that I'm missing, this big orange guy, I'm not sure about that. Maybe it's a 3 watt, could even be a 5 watt. Uh, I also don't have the original to make a mold out of, so what I'm going to do for the time being until I get the radio working, I'm going to just use a monitor resistor and I want to see how high it gets. I'm also not 100% sure of the value to use. Uh, like I said, the guy, the, the radio that I have had a 15K resistor in place of that. Um, so, we'll leave that one for last. So first up, I'm going to do the largest one. Um, because that gives me plenty of room to, uh, to seat this in. I think these might be a little bit tricky, although it is small, there's not a whole lot of uh, leeway there. So I need to mix up a little ball of putty, uh, dust some cornstarch in the mold, put some of the putty in, seat the resistor in there, bend the lead so they come out in the same spot down here, put a little more putty on top of it, then mush this down and wait till it hardens. Here's what they look like when they come out of the molds. I think they look quite good. I just need to trim off that excess flashing. That's the putty that oozes out between the halves of the mold. I finished casting all four resistors and now I'm painting them. But before I did, I made darn sure to double check them with my own meter so I got the right color on each resistor. There is one last capacitor I need to rebuild. That is this 0 .05 microfarad cap, which is in addition to later revisions. It was in this cardboard tube here, which I've already heated up, and I slid out the old capacitor. Now I'm going to put a new one inside of it and reuse the old end caps and seal it up with some hot glue. In parallel with that was a 400 ohm resistor which I found inside of this tube. Uh, inside of that was this flexible resistor. And it's measuring 463 ohms which is close enough so I'm just going to reuse it.